Well, it's July and we've got several new Google Assistant features to go over for various Google Assistant devices, including group video calling on Google Assistant displays, action blocks, and new features rolling out to third-party Google Assistant speakers. Now, before we dive into those features, a word of warning, if you live outside of the US or if you're in the US, but you don't use the US English version of the Google Assistant, some of the features that are demoed in this video may not have rolled out to you just yet. Also, special thanks to Letty Shops who partnered with us to bring you this video. All right, first up, let's talk about group video calling with Google Assistant displays. Google has just announced that it's bringing group video calling to assistant displays like the Nest Hub Max and third-party ones like the Lenovo Smart Display. You'll be able to group call with up to 32 people on Google Duo, but keep in mind that you will need to create these groups in the Duo app first before you can use them on your assistant display and call that group. For joining a Google Meet call, you'll be able to type in the room code on the display itself or tell Google to join your next meeting and it'll pull the meeting link from your Google Calendar event. Google is also rolling out its new speed dial feature it announced earlier in the year that allows you to call your friends and family faster from assistant displays. Add household contacts. Got it. Go ahead and pick your household contacts. All right, done. Next up, Google has announced that it's rolling out new features for third-party Google Assistant speakers like those made by Bose, JBL, and Sonos. First up is Voice Match, where you'll be able to teach the assistant on these speakers to recognize up to six different voices. Hot word sensitivity is also being added as well, which allows you to adjust how sensitive a speaker is to the hot word you use to trigger the assistant. Also, there's another update to Voice Match. When you set up a Google Assistant now for the first time, Google will now require you to say full phrases when teaching the Google Assistant your voice versus before where you just had to say the trigger word. This should help distinguish your voice from other members of your household who also use the Google Assistant. Now, the last feature that Google has brought to third-party Google Assistant speakers is being able to set a default speaker. So, for example, say you have a Sonos or Bose speaker and you set the default speaker, you can set that default speaker to either a different Google Assistant speaker or a speaker group. So when you tell the Google Assistant on the Bose or Sonos speaker to play music and media, it will play music and media on that default speaker or speaker group. Just note though that right now, third-party Google Assistant speakers, they can't actually be part of a Google Cast speaker group at the time of this recording. Though Google in their blog post did say that they're aiming to bring feature parity to third-party speakers, so hopefully that feature is coming sooner rather than later. Now, if you're looking at getting new Google Assistant devices like a third-party Google Assistant speaker or the Google Pixel 4a rumored to come out at any moment now, and you want to save some money on that purchase, you should check out Letty Shops, who partnered with us to bring you this video. Letty Shops is a cashback service that gives you money back on purchases made through specific retailers. It's free to sign up for their service, and you can choose from multiple retailers here in the U.S. like Walmart and Best Buy for your next Google purchase or any other goods. They also work with Microsoft, AliExpress, Banggood, Samsung, and more. Each retailer has a different cashback percentage that you can see displayed on Letty Shop's site. Letty Shops gets a commission for each sale that it brings these sites and it passes some of that commission back on to you. You can use Letty Shops on the web, through their mobile app, or with a web browser extension. Here's how it works. You sign up for an account, verify your email address, then choose the store that you want to shop at. After you're taken to that store, make your purchase as usual and the cash back will automatically be tracked from your order and credited to your account. It's quick, easy, and once your order is approved, you can get your payout at any time through PayPal. Register at LettyShops.com now and get a free premium account with a 30% plus increased cash back rate for your first week of shopping. Click the link in the description below to start shopping smartly. All right, next up, let's talk about the Google Home app. The Google Home app settings has always been kind of a bit much to navigate and Google is finally doing something about it. 
The settings part of the app has gotten a significant update with a material theme. Rooms and devices have their own section. There's a new delete this home shortcut at the bottom. The services section pulls some of the settings out of the Google Assistant settings, making them easier to access. Also, Google made it easier to find the works with Google info so you can more quickly get to that page to link smart home products to your home. Next up, Android TV. Now I don't have any updates here on the rumored successor to the Chromecast that comes with the remote, but if you currently have an Android TV, Google is now rolling out the ability to add Android TVs to cast speaker groups. Now, if you're ever in a situation where you can't find your phone and you ask the Google Assistant for help, but you have multiple phones, Google can now help you out in this situation as well. The Google Assistant will now roll off a list of phones that you may own if you have more than one. It will also list off your iPhone based on the phone number that you gave Google when you set up the Google Assistant device. Where's my phone? I found a few phones. The first listed is your Pixel 4 XL. Should I ring it? No. How about the Pixel 3a? Nope. Should I call your phone ending in No. I can't find any more phones linked to your Google account. Speaking of phones, if you have an Android phone, there's actually a pretty cool new way to trigger Google Assistant actions on your Android phone, especially for situations where you don't really want to use your voice to get the Google Assistant to do something for you. That's what Action Blocks is for. And what Action Blocks are, are basically widgets that you can place on your home screen and when you press them, they will trigger Google Assistant actions. All you need to do is download the Action Block app from the Google Play Store and then create a specific Google Assistant command in the app. You don't just have to limit yourself to single requests here either. You can do multiple requests in a single Action Block. You can then test out the action once you create it, give it an image and a name, and then place it in one of your home screens. It basically turns your Android smartphone into a remote remote control for Google Assistant actions, which is legit. And these blocks can also work with specific actions that only work on your phone, like texting someone or putting your phone on silent, etc. All right, just two more quick things before we wrap up. First, Google has announced that they are rolling out support for third-party Wi-Fi routers to integrate with the Google Assistant. So you'll be able to eventually ask the Google Assistant with these routers what your Wi-Fi speed is, etc. Lastly, if you've been using the photo frame feature on your Google Assistant display and you've wanted to change the photos that Google is pulling photos from on the display itself, well now you can. All you have to do is swipe up from the bottom and click settings, then select photo frame. You'll then be able to select and deselect the Google Photo albums that the Google Smart Display is pulling from. Well, that's it for all the updates I've got for you right now. Let me know in the comments if you've been enjoying some of the new features that Google has rolled out or if we may have missed one. And if you like this video and found it helpful, make sure you hit that thumbs up button below and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more assistant feature update videos and Google videos like this one. For six months later, I'm Josh Tedder. Thanks for watching.